you ever dined with the king? There is usually so much to eat. Have you ever been wooed by a king? By royalty? Won't you just say yes? This is a king's invitation. Don't you dare say no. Leave your dreams, experience heaven and earth, make this trip. Rendezvous spot, the Christ Family Assembly, Word Communication Ministries, Welcome. Number 1 Faith Drive off Kudati Avenue, Onireke GRA Ibadan. Dates, Sundays at 8 a.m. and Thursdays between 5.30 and 7.30 p.m. for an interactive session of Digging Deep into the Word of God, where you have the opportunity to ask questions. Dress code as you are. You may go on and on and on and on and on. And you seem there is no God. And you are having a field day. In your sin, in your wickedness, in your evil. And you are repentant. You seem to be doing it and be prospering. You seem to be doing it and this is well. You are not sick. You even saw people who go to church who pray and they are sick. You, you are doing it. You are not sick. So you are telling yourself. Hey, it's all fake. Why? Because the patience of God is enduring. Giving you an opportunity to repent and turn from wickedness. That you might be saved. It's a place to be, belong, and become all who are created to be. Word Communications Ministries welcome. Experience in life before death. David said, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. It's always a joy to be in the house of the Lord. There is a special way, even though we carry his abiding presence, that there is a special way the presence of God comes when we gather in his name. Because he promised it. Thank God he is here with us today and he will do us good in Jesus' name. This month is our month of redemption and the theme of total recovery for this month is plenteous redemption. When we talk of redemption it's is all a comparison. I used to have an account when I was in UK. Every month, depending on how you run the account, they give you points. I think it's even done by telephone companies. They give you points. And then, at a certain time, you can go and redeem your points. When your right comes to you, that's redemption of your right. When you are delivered from the enemy, that's redemption. When you are going through a situation and you are brought out of that situation, that's redemption. I could go on and on. We all need redemption. And in every area of your life where you need redemption this month, redemption is coming your way. This country is God's heritage. No devil is going to take this country. No evil agenda is going to prosper. Let's go to God's word. Our test is Psalm 75. Psalm 75. I will particularly love to read this test from the Good News Translation of the Bible. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks to you. We proclaim how great you are and tell of the wonderful things you have done. I have set a time for judgment, says God, and I will judge with fearness. Though every living creature tremble 
and the earth itself be shaken. I will keep his foundation firm. I'll tell the wicked not to be arrogant. I'll tell them to stop their boasting. Judgment does not come from the east or from the west, from the north or from the south. It is God who is the judge. Condemning some and acquitting others. The Lord holds a cup in his hand filled with the strong wine of his anger. He pours it out and all the wicked drink it. They drink it down to the last drop that I will never stop speaking of God of Jacob or singing praises to him. I love the last verse. He will break the power of the wicked. That the power of the righteous will be increased. Amen. Brethren, hearing and seeing the depth of the wickedness and evil going on in Nigeria today leaves one wondering what really is going on. Many questions go on in our minds. Is Nigeria this week so big, so blessed? Are we so weak? Many questions. One is tempted to join Habakkuk in his prayer in Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 13. Where Habakkuk said to God, but how can you stand these treacherous evil men, God? Your eyes are too holy to look at evil and you cannot stand the sight of people doing wrong. So why are you silent while they destroy people who are more righteous than they are? Habakkuk must have lived at the time that is as trying for Israel as the time we are living in this nation. And he was wondering, God, what's going on? Are you keeping quiet? Are you leaving us in this situation? You are too holy to allow evil and wickedness. Why are you silent, oh God? One is tempted to cry out to God. Like Habakkuk did. Let our experience confirm Psalms, Psalm 127 verse 1. If the Lord does not build the house, the work of the builder is useless. If the Lord does not protect the city, it does no good for centuries to stand guard. I think we have all come to realize right now, as Nigerians, that even though the greatest assignment of government is security of life and properties, that we thank God that God is alive and well and is the only one who can keep us. God is our sure security. Thank God this God still answers prayers. We have heard of all kinds of boastings. How some people say their tribesmen have been gathered. When this thing started coming out on the social media, it was like a joke. That they are going to come from all African countries, their tribesmen, the housemen. And they are going to take over our land. 
they will rape the women, kill the children, take over the land, and subjugate everyone. And maybe they are slaves. They boasted arrogantly. It reminds me in 2 Kings chapter 19 how Assyria boasted through Sennacherib boasting a threat against Israel a threat of total destruction he boasted of their exploits heavily equipped the greatest army in the world and when the Almighty will send him, he sent only one soldier. One soldier. One angel. One angel. God sent one angel. That night, after Hezekiah, has gone to the house of the Lord to report the matter. God said, Hezekiah, there is nothing to worry about the small thing. Our God is the Lord of hosts. He doesn't need a host. One angel went into the camp of the Syrians and 185 thousand was we are destroyed dead bodies were carried that God is the same yesterday today and forever what he did for one he can do for all God chose this nation This nation is a type of the Israel of God. And what God did for Israel, he will do again today. He will do for Nigeria. In this month of redemption, God will start something massive. And strange to those who don't know God concerning the redemption of our nation. One angel. I'm not sure if you put all of them together. All these terrorists, all these husbands, all these gun shooting groups who are terrorizing our nation. They will not up to they will not yet be up to one hundred and eighty five thousand. One angel is more than enough. When God decides to step in. So the big issue, the big question, is what shall we do that God may step in? Because if we can get God on the scene, the battle is over. The battle is over. What shall we do? There is nothing new I want to say that you have not heard or you probably will say, oh, if by the time I say well, we have done these things,
God's prescription is always accurate. Did you hear me? Whatever God prescribes for an ailment, if properly administered, will cure that ailment. But if a prescription is badly administered, instead of curing, it will create problems. In fact, it might even kill the victim. Am I talking? I begin to think perhaps we are not properly administering God's prescription for the cure of our nation. And I came to challenge us as a church. At least the people I have a measure of authority over and I have the privilege to speak to. That we take it upon ourselves to critically look at God's prescription. And as a church, let's administer it properly. In the day of crisis in Israel, God didn't wait for the entire nation to do what he wanted. Sometimes God just sees a man who stands in the ground and properly administers his prescription and healing comes. So I'm thinking we may not have to wait for the entire body of Christ in the nation. If God can find a congregation of people who will say this nation matters to us through the grace of God, we're going to pay the price for the redemption of our nation. We're going to give ourselves. We're going to let God use us to redeem the nation. God may find may have mercy. It quickly takes my mind to Abraham pleading for that wicked nation. God, if you find 50 men, will you please, for the sake of 50 men, spear that city, city, not nation? God say yes. For the sake of 50, I will. And the man thought, ah, this nation is so wicked. Hey, God, <laughs> please don't be annoyed. What if we find 30? God say yes, 30. What if you find 20? God said, okay. God, last time, last time, at least, uh -uh, no matter how bad there should be 10 people, what if we find 10? And God said, for the sake of 10, I will. If God will, for the sake of 10, save a city, he probably he was bold enough, knowing that I have at least one brother whom I can trust. Negotiated to one, the compassionate God probably will have said, Okay, for the sake of that one, I will spare. What I'm saying in essence is it's possible that if God can find us, find the right heart here in this house. A congregation of people that says, for the sake of this country, we will pay the price. God, my save us. I don't want to be a prophet of doom. I'm careful not to paint a picture of doom. That if you are sufficiently in the news, you will know that we are a nation sitting on a keg of gunpowder, ready to explode. 
is that we are surrounded by an army waiting for an instruction from somewhere for them to go on rampage. And when you look at it, it looks like they are being legislated for. We have been supported by the powers that be is fearful that nothing to be afraid. Ezekiah had a natural fear but he knew what to do with his fear. He ran to the house of the Lord and spread the letter before the Almighty and read it to God and cried out and prayed to God, Lord, help us. And brethren, the passage of today's message gave us a basis. Something we can hold on to. To cry to God. Let's look at what it says again. We give thanks, oh God, we give thanks to you. We proclaim how great you are and tell of the wonderful things you have done. God has been great in this nation. God has done incredible things in this nation. This nation has survived so many troubles. Troubles that the international world, the international community thought this is now the end of Nigeria. In fact, they have predicted many ends to Nigeria. When they will say, ah, Nigeria is finished. And suddenly we will bounce out. And then things will go on. And then situation will say, ah, this time, surely, surely, Nigeria is finished. And then we'll come out and bounce back. There is a hand that is upon this nation that have never let us down. And in the situation in which Nigeria is today, this mighty God will not let us down. Look, he now said in verse 2, I have set a time for judgment, says God. God wants everybody to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That's why sometimes God allows the wicked to go on in their wickedness. They are killing, they are maiming, they are shedding bloods, they are looting. You know, God loves these looters too. He doesn't love their wicked acts. He loves them. He wants them to be saved. He is not quick to destroy them. And when you look at how it is, it's like it's a whole tribe that is behind this thing. God is not just interested in wiping them out like that. That's why he seems to be slow to bring his judgment. But the patience of the Lord is not going to be forever. He has a set time. A set day for judgment. And so it is where everyone you may go on and on and on and on and on. And it seems there is no God. And you are having a field day in your sin, in your wickedness, in your evil. And you are repentant. You seem to be doing it and be prospering. You seem to be doing it and this is well. You are not sick. You even saw people who go to church who pray and they are sick. You, you are doing wicked. You are not sick. So you are telling yourself. Hey, it's all fake. 
Why? Because the patience of God is enduring. Giving you an opportunity to repent and turn from wickedness that you might be saved. God wants this guy to be saved. But friends, God cannot be taken for granted forever. I don't know why I'm preaching this message this Sunday. But I guess the alarm is ringing now. And the time of judgment is about to begin. I don't know whether my voice will be heard or not. But this may be one of God's last warning before he steps on the stage. I have set a time for judgment, says God. And he will judge with fairness. The Christ Family Assembly Word Communication Ministries Welcome Number 1 Faith Drive Off Kudati Avenue Onireke GRA Ibadan Dates Sundays at 8am And Thursdays between 5.30 and 7.30pm For an interactive session Of digging deep into the Word of God Where you have the opportunity to ask questions Dress code as you are It's a place to be Belong And become all who are created to be Word Communications Ministries welcome experiencing life before death.